I am E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of your own terrifying imagination. Since the beginning of time, people have argued about the existence of ghosts. They've been called variously wraiths, specters, phantoms, apparitions, shadows or shades. But everyone agrees that if there are such things as ghosts, they are the souls of dead persons haunting living persons. And that's what our story is about. Ghosts. No one, Mr. Garth, whether professional ghost hunters or ordinary people, have ever been able to spend an entire night in that house. Well, how many have tried, Mr. Flanders? Well, I know of at least a dozen. And that's within the past two years. Well, did you get any reports from the professionals? Most sketchy ones. But they all say the same thing. That whatever or whoever it is that haunts that house, the manifestations are the most powerful and evil in their experience. They all mention nameless horrors. Our mystery drama, A Ghostly Game of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars William Prince. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Nameless horrors. A nice phrase. But as soon as you put a name and identity to horrors, somehow they prove bearable. In the last century, people have shown that they can and do bear up under mass genocide and atomic bombings but the horror that is nameless, that is the most fearful of all. And our spine tingler will try to put a name to one kind of horror. You are not real. There are no such things as ghosts. I just imagine things. But I see you. I see you. No, don't. Don't hurt me. Whatever you are. Please, get away from me. You want us to leave the house? I will. I will. If that's what you want, just please let me by. I'll go right down the stairs, walk out of the house, and never come back. Is that what you want? Please. No. Don't touch me. Let me out. Paper said, Mr. Garth. But we know better. It's ghosts. That house is haunted. Mr. Flanders, my field of study is the super. But I can't even begin to tell you whether I can help or not until you get control of yourself. I'm sorry, but this, this, this whole thing is just about putting off firm out of business. Well, the house, Mr. Flanders. Do you have anything on the history of the house? Yes. It was built in the early 1800s by a sea captain named Ephraim Hatch for himself and his bride, a young lady named Lucy Endicott. And they lived in it for some four years until the tragedy. Mm-hmm. You have the details? Well, Captain Hatch was supposedly a hellraiser in his youth, but also a great seafaring man. He was in whaling and, if the rumors are true, slave trading. At any rate, he amassed a fortune... He fell in love with this Endicott girl who was the town beauty, married her, settled down, and built this house. Mm-hmm. It's a tragedy. Well, the story goes, as nearly as we can piece it together, that the captain returned from one of his voyages earlier than expected and found his bride entertaining a lover. And he killed them both. Horribly. And ever since, the house has been haunted and unlivable. We're building a condominium... This house is a key location, right in the middle of the property we own. We can't even get records to tear it down. No one will go near the place. You keep telling me that no one has lived in the house. What about this girl who just died? Oh, that was a stupid idea of my partner's. Her name was Roberta Ginley, a television reporter. 
She wanted to make a name for herself, and my partner sold me on the idea that if she spent a night in the house and then went on television and told people about it, our problems would be solved. And now we're in a worse mess than before. That's why we came to you. Well, there you are, gentlemen. The haunted house. Well, is it always this windy, Mr. Flanders? No, Mr. Kelly. Only when the wind blows from the east off the ocean. Well, for a haunted house, it looks substantial enough. Well, shall we go up to the house, Mr. Flanders? Um, why don't you two go... I'll wait for you here. You'll be quite safe, Mr. Flannery. It's broad daylight. Jim Kelly here has been with me in more haunted places and dealt with more ghosts than any man, except myself. Uh, and don't forget Byron. Byron is my dog, Mr. Flanders. And like me, he doesn't believe in ghosts. Huh? Do you, Byron? <coughs> oh, uh, I'm not scared, gentlemen. It's just that I've seen the house so many times, I've... <laughs> well, I don't want to influence you. Who's this, uh... Uh, let's go, Byron. You will uh, bring all our gifts in? Well, it's back at the motel. We won't need it until tonight. Huh. Wow. They certainly built solid houses in the old days. Look at this door. What? Take it easy, Byron. Boy, everything's okay. You got the keys right here? Mm-hmm. All right, in we go. In we go. Come on now, Byron. Come on. We're on our way to meet the ghost. Jim, keep Byron quiet. Sit, sit, Byron. Come on, sit. I don't think we should bother the downstairs. Let's go up and see where we're going to speak tonight. All right, I'm with you. Come along, Byron. Oh, this looks like the master's bedroom. I'll sleep here. All right, I'll sleep in this little alcove here. Right, right off your room. Byron, what is the matter with you? I wouldn't try to take him into that alcove, Tim. He can stay in this room with me tonight. All right, all right. Hey, there's a door here leading outside to what you call the widow's walk. Want to come out and look around? I'll be right with you. Just checking the fireplace. You're going to need logs. Okay. Where's the door? Ah, it's right here. <clears throat> it hasn't been open in a long time. No. Ah. <sighs> What of you? Look at that ocean. Any woman waiting out here to see her husband's ship come in might be blown away. And what Flanders tells the captain's wife wasn't too anxious for her husband to return. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she was too busy entertaining her lover. Oh, look, 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 you wore the rail. Oh, Thanks, Mr. Scott. That caught me. I, I would have gone off. What happened? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I, uh, I don't know. I just... I, Lost my balance. Come on, Jim. We know each other better than that. What happened? I really don't know, Alex. I swear. I thought someone pushed me. Mr. Garth, I'm not at all sure I'm doing the right thing, and I'll understand if you don't want to go through with this. I'll pay all your expenses to date. You're uh, concerned about my safety? Yes. A real estate deal is important, but not that important. Mr. Flanders, you have nothing on your conscience. Tim and I will spend tonight in the house, and by tomorrow, the ghost should be at rest. And you think there is a ghost? Well, of course. I just don't believe in its malevolence. Have you taken care of the wooden logs for the fireplaces? The men wouldn't go into the house, but uh, you'll find plenty of firewood outside the door. Fine. Then I'll be on my way. <laughs> uh, I've never seen Byron act like this. Mm, something to think about. Well, I've been with you on about 50 of these haunted house deals. You think there's something different about this one? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. that sort of moan before. According to you, Alex, it's a ghost in pain. It is. <laughs> Sounds like the evening's entertainment is about to start. Tim? Yes, Alex? We've worked together for a long time, and we get along so well because I respect your disbelief in the supernatural. Yeah, which has come in handy when I uncovered a few tape recorders and other little safe devices. Right, right, but for your own sake, Tim. 
There's something about this house that seems different. Now, please, be careful. Huh? You're trying to scare me? Oh, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> right, right. Now, how about some wood for my fire? Oh, whoever you are, if you're trying to scare us, it's not going to work. You know, in all the years we've been working together, Alex, I've yet to see a ghost. But you've heard them. Oh, so you tell me. You talk with them. I just hear noises, and sometimes they're man-made. Mm-hmm, and sometimes not. Uh, would you strike a match, please? Ah, that's better. Huh. Get some of the chill off the room. In the fireplaces always seem to make a room more cheerful. The electricity must have been installed around, oh, I guess the turn of the century. Huh? <laughs> well, I've seen brighter lights, but at least. We have light. And candles. Oh, did I share mine with you? No, I have a supply back in my room. Oh, all right. Ah, right, here we go again. Spirit wrapping. Oh, now I've made it angry. Listen to me. Whoever you are, my name is Alex Garth. I would like to help you, but I can't unless... Doesn't want to talk to you, evidently, Alex. We'll see. Although you're my friend in the lie, you are often a disturbing influence. Now, I won't deny that I'm an unbeliever. So I'll turn in now that the fire's going. And you can go back to your side of the room and commune with the spirits. And with each other, Tim. We'll check with each other, as we always do. Just get lost. He'll get over it when he sees nothing's happening. Hey. What? My lights just went out. How are yours? Going. Going. Go. Easy, boy. Easy. I know you're in trouble. Please, let me help you. If you show yourself, I could help you. I've helped others. Believe me. Is your name Lucy? Lucy Endicott? If you are Lucy, would you rap twice? Can you? Come here. Come here. Lucy, you're frightening a dumb animal. You're not frightening me. I'm sure you don't want to terrify a beast. He's never done you any harm. Come here. Come out of that corner. Come to me. Come on, good God. Good come on, come on. Alex, the fire's going out in here. So we go to the candles. You plenty of matches, haven't you? Yeah, I'm fine, but I'm really worried about Byron. Oh, somebody's playing games. I tried to find the fuse box if I could, but... Hey. What is it, Jim? Well, whoever's at the controls is pretty good. A nice cold gust of wind just blew out the match I was using to light the candle. Well, I've got a couple of candles lit. You want one? Oh, no, thanks. I'm not scared of the dark. <laughs> ah, that's pounding. That's a new one, isn't it, Alex? It's new to me. It is a spirit wrapping. Sounds like someone wants in. Mm. Want to go down and open the door? Oh, oh, no chance. Hey, Alex, your side of the room is rocking like a boat. I'm steady as a rock. Was that Byron? Yes. What happened? I'm not sure. He... He's dead, Tim. What? His neck seems to have been broken. Tim, did you hear me? I said Byron is dead. Tim, are you all right? Tim, Tim, what is it? Run! Run! We are alive! Each 
Each man has his own nightmare. Something from which he will run, driven by the secret whips of his own fears. But I suspect that Alex Garth could not tell you what it was that Tim Kelly ran from that night in the house that faced the sea. We'll be back shortly with Act Two. Alex Garth, authority on the supernatural, has undertaken to spend a night in a house so demon-ridden that workmen have even refused to tear it down. Deserted by his friend and ally, Tim Kelly, who fled in terror from unknown fears, Garth knew that he had to face the rest of the night alone as the heavy outer door boomed closed behind Tim Kelly. Will you show yourself now? I promise not to run away like my friend. You'll never find peace unless you let me help you. There can be no rest for you except through me. Do you think you're being punished for some sin you committed when you were alive? That isn't you. Is it, Lucy? Please, let me help you. I will not let you in and I will not leave this house. Locking the room doesn't frighten me. I'm not afraid. Mr. Coggins! We split a tough gun. Keep her steady or I'll kill you! That letter I received in Trinidad tells me that my Lucy, my wife, is it carrying on under the roof of the house that I built for her with young John Roger? So, Mr. Coggins, we're going to drive for home and to hell with the storm. Nightmares. We've all experienced them. But I venture to say that none of us has experienced the horrible sights shapes and sounds that Alex Garth saw and heard in that dark room of the haunted house for the next hour. And when he still held hard to his sanity and what remained of his courage, the apparitions changed in character. Garth no longer knew what was real and what was fantasy. He later told me that he may even have fallen asleep, hard as that may be to believe. Alex? Alex God. Lucy? I am Lucy. Am I not fair, Alex God? Yes. Even beautiful? Very beautiful. Would you not like to touch me, Alex? Even if I wanted to, I could not. You think I am cold and, and repulsive. That is what you think. John? Tell Alex how nice I am to touch. You are very nice to the touch, Lucy. Was John your lover? You do nothing but ask questions, Alex Garth. What should I do, Lucy? Make me feel once more the touch of a man. A man you love. And... Lucy, you're in torment. I can only give you peace. Torment? Why should I be unhappy? I live here in my house and... and... <sighs> of course, we were naughty, John and I. We tried to frighten you. But that was only because I don't like strangers in my home. Apologize to Alex, John. This is a childish game you're playing, Lucy. But I adore games. I love games. Come dance a minuet with me, Alex. <laughs> Isn't the music lovely, Alex? I don't dance the minuet, Lucy. John, you dance with me. This was how John and I first met. Doesn't he dance beautifully, Alex? Very beautifully. Remember, John? Remember how you looked at me that night? Yes. And that old witch Hannah saw it. 
and wrote the letter to your husband. Oh, nothing, John. It was much later. Look at me that way again, John. Oh, you're no fun. No fun anymore at all, John. Alex, you come and dance with me. No, thank you. You are afraid, Alex. Yes, I am afraid. John, you heard. He is afraid. I said I was afraid, Lucy, but not terrified. Fiddlesticks. You play with words, Alex God. And you want me to play ghostly games with death, don't you, Lucy? You are here to drive me from my home. Are you happy in your home, Lucy? I will not leave. You shall fail. Others have tried. Would you like to see what happened to those others? I have a mirror you can look into in my room. Just down the hall. Look in that mirror if you dare. I think I've been given a fairly good idea already. Leave this house, Alex. For your own sake, leave. Tomorrow morning, Lucy. Tomorrow will be too late. Sit down, Alex Garden. Room of Doc Spinning. There. That's better, isn't it? I'm still dizzy. I warned you. Now. Alex Garth. Now. Look at me. Good. Lord! You do not find him beautiful now, Alex Garth. Not now, with the blood flowing from the wounds inflicted on me by me when he murdered me. Not murdered. Executed. You would not like to kiss me now, Alex Garth. Stay where you are. You need not worry about my blood staining in your clothes. It will not even show. Stay away. Someone will wish to kiss me. Someone who loves me. I will kiss you, Lucy. I will embrace you. And I will embrace you, John, my love. Even with the blood flowing from your poor lips. I can't look. I can't. It will do you no good to put your hands over your eyes, Alex. You will still see the bloody lovers kiss No, I won't witness this horror. My thoughts are mine. And they're real. You're phantoms and you don't exist. For many we don't. But you know that we do. We are here. And we are real. And the only way you can banish us from your mind's eye is to run. Run, as your wise friend did. Run and you'll see us no more. No. No, Lucy. I'm not leaving this house. carriage bearing me to the burial ground, Alex. If you open your eyes, you can see into the coffin. The undertaker did a fine job. I looked almost as pretty as I did before I died. I was wearing a dress you see me in, Alex, and the only one or father who wasn't afraid of my husband's wrath, the only person who didn't believe I was a wanton. Do you believe that? Yes. You do? Yes. Everyone feared Captain Hatch. And you, Lucy, most of all, you still fear him. No. Oh, why won't you go? Like you, Lucy, I am bound. How bound? By my knowledge, by my pride, by knowing if I leave now... I failed. You have stayed longer than anyone. Not long enough. You mustn't stay. What you have seen is... It will be worse. And dangerous for you. Even more dangerous. 
You're afraid for me? Yes. Why? You really don't know. Of course not. But you seem, John. Have you not noticed that you are very alike? Well, I really hadn't looked that closely. Would you? No, no, I believe you. Then you must see how dangerous it is for you now. Then help me. I cannot. If you would trust me and tell me what the control is, I could help. You're very wise, Alex, but this is something beyond your wisdom. Try me. It's impossible. I am held here by forces stronger than yours. How do you know what my powers are? I told you, you are not the first who has been here. But you are the bravest. And your courage will destroy you. In the morning, Kelly, you woke me up. I'm not quite functioning yet. What do you see? What's in that house? Demons. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. No, but I believe in evil. And, Mr. Flanders, in that house, you can actually feel the presence of evil. It's all around you, and it's dangerous. Now, listen, Kelly. God knew what he was getting into. It's up to him to handle it. I tell you, his life is in stake. Well, if you're convinced of that, then it's up to you to do something about it. Not to run away. You speak to me of powers, Alex Garth, yet you are afraid to test them. What kind of test do you propose? The mirror. The mirror in my room. Let's go. Well, come on. I'm warning you, Alex Garth. Oh, wait a second. Your death machine will not help you. Death machine? Oh, you mean the revolver. Call it what you like. It spits fire and noise and has been used stupidly by stupid people against us. Surely you know better, Alex Scott. No, it gives me something to hold on to. Come on. You could try to hold on to me. This, this is your room? You fear to go in? Oh, I'm wondering what it is about this room that... This is the room Tim ran out of, isn't it? The mirror is over here. Now, look in the mirror, Alex Garth. Look well. See, Alex Garth? Is that you, Lucy? It is I, Alex. He's a very young girl. And your schoolmates? Who are they? Schoolmates. Is John among them? Look. Look in the mirror. I... I can't make out the faces. Now you're grown. I... I can't. Oh! No! No! Mirror, mirror on the wall. What did the hunter of ghosts Alex Garth see in the mirror that so terrified him, he lost his head and shot at the images in the glass. I'll be back shortly to tell you what Garth saw when I return with Act Three. Some people believe in ghosts. Some very thoughtful people. There are others who say if you believe in ghosts, you will see ghosts. And Alex Garth, expert on the supernatural, is not only seeing, but talking to ghosts. As experienced and as cool a ghost hunter as Alex Garth has just committed the childish act of firing his revolver into a mirror, shattering the glass into a million pieces. And doing the same to his composure. Stupid, stupid, stupid. 
Breaking the mirror isn't going to change anything, Alex Garth. The only thing you can do is leave. I'm not leaving, Lucy, until dawn. If you stay, your mind becomes a mirror. A mirror for all the things you don't want to look at. Well, if I have to look, I will. Then farewell, Alex Garth. You and I will see each other. But we can no longer talk until you join us. Join you? You are doomed. You will join John and me here in my home for all eternity. And God help you, Alex Garth. Because I no longer can. Lucy. Lucy, is that you? Lucy, my darling, my love, I... I must go now. No, no. Please stay a little longer. Just a little longer, dear heart. Why did you marry him, Lucy? He went away, John, my love. He left and never said a word. How could I, Lucy? You know I didn't have a penny. You could have told me you loved me. You knew that. You knew it all the time we were growing up. Sometimes when people grow up, they change, John. And I was afraid you no longer cared for me. That's why you married the captain. I didn't want to be an old maid. Oh, there was no chance of that. I was afraid. I was afraid, John. He he was so strong. John, I'm going to have a child. What? I'm going to have a baby, John. You're a baby. You? You're sure? I'm sure. Then we have to leave. You must come away with me, Lucy. Where will we go? West. To a new place. For a fresh start. Somewhere where Ephraim can't find us. There is no such place. Of course there is. Lucy, you know what will happen if Ephraim discovers that... Ephraim won't be home for at least a week. He was in Trinidad the last I heard... Lucy! Lucy, please! Come on! Come on down! You're on the boat! What do we do? Hide! Where? Anywhere. Quick. There, in my wardrobe, behind my gown. Lucy! Coming, Ephraim. Just getting my robe. Don't be wasting your time, Lucy. It's been four months since I've seen you last. All right, Lucy. Where is he? Who? John Rogers, your lover. Have you gone mad, Ephraim? Aye, maybe. Mad with jealousy. Stop lying and tell me where he is. You're hurting me. Aye, and I'll be hurting you a lot more unless you tell me where he is. Who put those terrible ideas into your head? The widow Davies, that's who. And, and you believe that old gossip? Tell me she lies. Tell me. Here. The lies. Aye. Lie there and snivel whilst I rust out your fancy man for wherever he's cowering. There's no one here, Ephraim. God is my witness. No one. Here we go. Well, for your sake, I hope you're right. But the widow told me she saw him sneaking into the house tonight. She lied. She lied. Maybe. And now, how about your wardrobe? Ephraim! I am with child. Get up on your feet. The child is yours, Ephraim. Your child. You think I'll have my wife carrying another man's child? No. Oh, you'll be killing your own child. A liar. Cheat. Oh, stop. 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 <laughs> He's here. The man who got you with child. Then come here and stop me. Come on, no. You know I can't do that. Can't? You mean you won't? You know as well as I do. I've never had anything to do with your wife. Just as you know very well who I am. What I'm trying to do here. Then do it. I'll match my blade against your pistol any time. Captain. No, John. No. So, you came out at last, did you? No. Tell me how you like the face of steel. Here, have another drink, Garth. You look as if you need it. Slam 
wonders there isn't enough liquor in the world to warm me. Not after what I saw at your house. Then it is haunted. By ghosts beyond anything in my experience. Can you help me? I hope so, but I'm not sure. I managed to stay the night, and I barely managed to survive. There's one room in the house that seems to be the focal point of all the manifestations. That's the room I believe was occupied by Captain Hatch's young wife, Lucy. That's the room from which Tim ran last night. And that's the room in which I saw things no man should ever have to see. And you propose to hire some workmen? Oh, that's impossible. I told you what happened when I, I had work. I can understand why no workmen from around this area will go near the place. I intend to import a couple of men I've used before. Well, you could try it, but... What would you want them to do? To dig into and around that room and see if we can find something that will account for the hauntings. We... Well, you and I will be with them. A uh, correction. I hired you, Garth. You'll be with them. And report back to me. Hello? Flanders, this is Olive Garth. I'm calling you from a diner just down the road from the house. With good news? With news. My workman walked out. Well, that's that. If you want that house cleansed. All I ask is you meet me there in half an hour. Well, why do you need me? Well, for two reasons. One, I don't know what may have to be done to the house, which is your property. And two, I don't think one man can do all the necessary digging that may have to be done. <laughs> Try not to think about this house or the stories about it. Just just hand me that hammer. What do you want with a hammer? I want to test these walls, the floors. And if there's a secret passage or some nonsense like that? Well, I don't know what there is, but there must be something. You'll have to take my word for it that what goes on in this house isn't an ordinary lost or restless spirit seeking solace. It's something that's Planned and controlled. How? That's what I hope to find out. Ah! Here. You found something? I think so. Listen. That sounds hollow. Yes. And the further down you go towards the floor, the hollower it sounds. I mean, that crowbar. Uh... Well, maybe we should let things be. Not if you want to rid the house of the ghosts. Or what will we find? Lord knows. <coughs> Here goes. And a... Oh, 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 wait. <coughs> Can't you handle us with that? <laughs> you scared? Well, I think I'd feel better if I stepped outside. <laughs> be over in a minute. <coughs> I, I don't think I'm going to be able to stand this. Well, just think of something else. You get a thought, you get hold on to it. Well, I can, I can only think of the sea and the storm and the ship driving and a woman. Flanders, uh, well, hold on to me. Hang on. And look. Look, there's nothing down there but a room. Uh, look, look for yourself. God, why, sh why should I be so terrified? Why do I want to run? There are steps. Come on. No, you want me to go down? Come on, it's only an empty room. I'm not so sure it's been... Come on. No. Steady now. What's that? It's a table. There's something on it. I know. Let's see. It's just a plain saucer. Yeah, the saucer's plain. But look what's in it. What is that stuff? Well, I'm not sure, but it looks to me like or something like mercury. I bet there's mercury in it. We'll have to have it analyzed. What's that on top of it? A needle. 
Look at it spent. I see. But don't you see anything else? No. Well, look under the saucer. Looks like a slip of paper. It does indeed. Let's have a look at it, if I can get it out without disturbing the... There we are. There's running on it. What does it say? As moves this needle, so moves my will. Accursed be this house and all who dwell therein. See to it that they find neither rest nor tranquility, but be doomed to eternal agony and torment beyond the ken of man and woman. To which I affix my seal and signature, Ephraim Hatch, master of the schooner Lucy. Do you mean to tell me that this piece of paper... That saucer of liquid and a needle. Look out. The saucer. Be careful. Quick, quick, the ladder. Hurry, hurry, Flanders. (laughs) The smoke. I can't breathe. The ladder. Quickly. I'm right behind you. How do you say thanks to a man who saved your life? Oh, don't, don't bother. You wouldn't have been down there in the first place if I hadn't insisted. I owed it to you to get you out of there. God. Yes? I want to explain about my upsetting the saucer. I wouldn't say this to anyone except you, but... I swear that something pushed my hand. Do you believe that? Yes, Flanders, I believe it. And now your house is cleansed. The fire will see to that. For those of you who are skeptical about the existence of such things as ghosts, I have a suggestion. Find a house reputed to be haunted and spend the night there. And then let me know about it. I'll be back shortly. Alex Garth is still an avid investigator of the supernatural. However, he has a curious reluctance to tell people about what he saw during the night he spent in that house on the New England coast. And he never admits that many times in the dead of night, he sees again the face of Lucy her lover, and the terrible sword of Captain Ephraim Hatch. And he awakens with his mouth open in a soundless scream. Our cast included William Prince, Ralph Bell, Joan Tyson, William Redfield, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Are you saying the legend is true that Millie has offended the beast goddess and is being punished? I don't know what I'm saying. But look at her. She's flushed, breathing rapidly. She could burst through that sedative any minute. Oh, my heavens. I'm so hungry. Try to rest, darling. I'm going to speak with a hospital in Rio. I'll describe her symptoms. They'll arrange together. Oh, my wrist. Oh, oh, my wrist. Oh, oh. Doctor. It's burning. Oh. Look at her wrist. Look at her wrist. Something's on it. It's a design. It's the shape of that bracelet. Kevin, it's your imagination. Here's it, look. Do you see that symbol? It's on every ornament worn by the goddess. The design decorates her dress. It's just a raw, ugly scar. But it's her sign. The sign of the beast goddess. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.